Hey guys, this is DFD, aka Dark Frozen Death, back with another Kamihime Project video. Now, this one, before I did a video where it was for basically the um, beginner to mid tier players, I'm going to redo that video and still do something for a higher tier players because we do have some higher tier content in order to go after. But, um, anyways, this is going to cover a lot of stuff. That we have in the game now, and then also some stuff later on. At least as far as I know what there is to look forward to. Because there's definitely some content that's going to be quite difficult later down the line as well. More more so than what we have right now. But, starting off, as you notice on the screen, there's this little countdown timer that says burst time. Everybody should know how to use that to your advantage because of the simple fact that whenever you enter a raid, it doesn't matter if it's an event raid or if it's a union raid or anything like that, as long as it's a raid boss, you start off with all your burst gauges filled, 100% filled, and that's something you can use to your advantage because it'll let you go into the fight, immediately let off your own full burst. And it's a good way to do a lot of damage, especially when you get a lot stronger. That, combined with what I have here, allows me to pretty much just one-shot some stuff. Like, if I really went into um, these raid quests, with how strong my team is now, they could pretty much one-shot almost all of the um, raid bosses from ultimate down. In just one turn. So, that's how powerful um, the uh, burst time can actually be. Second, something else that everybody should do, no matter what. Go into this other tab in the gotcha, pull all your gems, your gem gotcha pulls. Do that, it will still get you some very good stuff. It has changed over the years, and it ends up being um, pretty much just R weapons, SR weapons, R addons and SR addons. You could sell all the add-ons, period, point blank. The only exception would be the plus one add-ons. You could sell all of those that are not plus one, because you will probably not use any of them. The only ones that probably would use some of them is maybe the SR ones, and maybe if you're starting off, but eventually you'll start getting SSR add-ons from events and su stuff, so they'll quickly become outdated. As far as it goes to the weapons, they will never be outdated, because whether there are SR plus one or not, you want all these weapons in order to use them to upgrade your stuff. So, there's that. Plus, some of them will release Kamihime, so if you don't have them, then congrats, you got more characters. But, um, other things that you may want to pay attention to is also the different gotchas on this pickup tag, because you can throw magic jewels at them as well. Like, for instance, she's 100% at the one for Dark. Somebody might have a good chance of getting hurt. You want to burn out magic jewels for that. Now, if you're a paying player, you can go into this other stuff like special tab and all that. There's different things to really get. I've done plenty of videos on different things as well. Miracle tickets are usually good to go after. This one, however, is subjective because it's twice the price of a normal miracle ticket, but it lets you get any of the awakened Kamihime all the way up to their awakening state. So, they'll start off at level 1 awakened. If you use everything in the set on them. These gu guaranteed elements are actually pretty good to pay for. Because if you're aiming for a specific element. It narrows the pool dramatically. You won't. Like for instance. You still can get R and SR stuff from it. But you will never get anything from say light or dark or fire or wind. If you're going for this water one. So it cuts off like five elements. So that can actually be pretty good. This is a little bit misleading. Because this weapon. This weapon enhancement ticket, if you decide to pay for that, it's going to end up giving you one of the Dragonic Eye weapons. I will show them later. It does not give a Kamihime weapon. The gacha itself, where you get the 10 draw, that might give a Kamihime weapon. The ticket itself does not. So you have to pay attention to that. But whether you're a paying or free player, there's some stuff for you to do in the gacha, period, point blank, so do that. Free players, I suggest you save up your magic jewels for something you really, really want to pull on. Paying players can ignore that. But everybody should be doing their gym gotcha pulls. Doesn't matter if you're paying or put or um, free. You are doing...
doing your gym gacha pulls because that's going to get you the bulk of your upgrades for your um weapons and stuff. Speaking of which, going into weapons themselves, this is the most important thing. I'm going to remove all these filters as well. But this is the important thing about your weapons. You want to try and upgrade them as much as possible. Now, granted I said as much as possible because there is a lot of stuff to try and upgrade. There is a lot. Just looking at this, I have a full page of um, Final Break Women, and we'll get to that later. But um, it can be a bit of a long process to upgrade all this stuff, believe me when I say that. But you still have to keep at it, and that gem gotcha is going to be the biggest bulk of it because it feeds you so much to do that with. So... Here's a whole trick with upgrading. First off, you want to plan on which weapons you definitely want to upgrade and keep. Any upgradable weapon that goes to final break limit is good to start off with. However, you will end up replacing some of them later on. So you want to have yourself get a bit of a time sink. You want to keep weapons that get assault, pride, and possibly vigor. Those are definite keepers. Other ones that may be worth looking out for is exceed and defender. And even Ascension, too, if you can get a few of them. You want certain combinations in order to do that type of stuff. Preferably weapons that come off with two skills and then eventually get another one later down the line through it changing. This is a good case of this right here, this weapon I'm, I've built up and I'm trying to get further on. It starts off with Assault and Defender, so I'm going to get more attack power more HP for my light characters. When it final breaks, this is going to change. Rampart is actually Defender plus Vigor, and it still counts as small towards both. So it will actually fuse two skills into one, so it's a triple effect weapon. I can't call it a triple skill weapon because it's still two skills, but you get what I mean. Those are generally some of the best weapons in the game, where you can get multiple boosts towards offensive power, and then also get something else to go with it that's really useful. So, for instance, if you find a weapon that gives you Assault and Pride, and then it also gives you something like, say, Ascension, then that's pretty good to have. A weapon that definitely gives you, like, Assault, Pride, and Exceed is very good to have. That is extremely offensive weapons, and it will save you a lot of space. But, um, you still want to get a good balance of them. Generally speaking, you want to try and have every single weapon possibly have some form of either Assault or Pride. And if not that, Vigor. Because that's where you're going to get your most damage output. Also, you want to know what how much you're getting for Exceed weapons and whatnot. Now, off the top of my head, when you get um, Exceed, Large, that can go up to skill level 30, would give you like a 50% cap increase, if I'm remembering that correctly. Cap increases is pretty much increasing the soft cap because your burst damage and generally any damage in the game has a point where if it hits that that number, excess damage past that point is going to be drastically reduced. And you want those caps to be as high as possible. Now, you don't have to go out your way for elaborate because um, it really doesn't increase that much through weapons. It's mainly through buffs. But um, weapons themselves are generally good for increasing um, exceed. If you do happen to find a few um, increased technical, maybe try to fit them in, but they're not necessary. And elaborate, it's okay if it comes with something, but you don't really want to go out your way with that. But generally, you want to try and get every single weapon that has assault or pride or vigor. Every single one on your, your weapon grid. And if it doesn't have it out the gate, you want to make sure it leads into it too, because there's some that get some very good um, final breaks. Like, this is an event weapon that I don't have enough materials to have Final Break. We'll get to that later. But, um, it has Assault, and it gets Defender later on. This is actually kind of worth getting because of the fact that, um, it will increase the HP of your fire characters, as well as giving them a lot of offensive power just from one single weapon. As you can see, I've already got one right here that's already skill level 30. You can get duplicate weapons. That's the main reason why I got a lot of these, because this is one of the best light weapons to get right here, out the gate. I can say that off the top of my head. There's also some pretty strong um, weapons across other stuff, too. Like, I know this one's very good, too. 
because um it's a medium assault and a large defender. That's a very good combo for um for a gacha weapon. Now granted you would rather have the assault be large and the defender be medium, but this is still very good. Just pay attention to what you're pulling and see what if it's worth it or not. Some skills that could have slight effect but aren't really necessary would be rush, barrage, and um Elaborate kind of counts for that one too. It'd be rush, barrage, and um elaborate. There is one more I can't really think of right now, but it might actually be um There's a few there's quite a few skills out there actually. You have to like literally do your research and double check on that type of thing. That's why I do videos about that stuff. So generally with the event video, I'll come out and just say Okay, here's this weapon, here's what it has. If you're interested, go get it. But, um... Yeah, see, this is another one that's actually worth it, even though they exceeds pretty much large. And this will turn into Assault plus um, Rush. Stinger, that's the other one I couldn't think of. Stinger is... Could be useful, but it's not really necessary, especially since Stinger only works when you have the advantage. Because elemental advantage is definitely a thing in this game. Learn how it works because we're going to need it later on. But, um, Eidolons are the same case as weapons. You want to try and figure out who does what and see what's best suited for what situation. Because some Eidolons are better suited as main, some are better suited as sub, and some can work either way. So you have to keep that in mind. Like, for example, I have 100% Eidolons as well. And a case of a good main or sub is this one right here. Because she's got a strong boost as a main, which is the Eidolon effect. And as a sub, she has a good summon attack. But she also has pretty good stats. A case of a good main, but not a good sub, would have to be, um... Would have to be an Eidolon like her. Because her sub effect isn't all that great, this energy drain. But her main effect is pretty good because regardless of what team you put her on, her elemental attack will increase. I mean, her her effect will increase the elemental attack of the team. And she gets a nice sad bonus of increasing the drop rate. There will be an epic quest for her later on for everybody to go get her. So, that said, when it happens, do so. She'll be one of the most useful ones. And I don't that's got a good... Good, um, sub-effect, but not main effect, will be these Kaisers. And also the Divine Beasts, like Bayako, and there's a few others that will pop up later on. But, um, these Kaisers, their main effect is actually bad. Because, unlike Ascension, it will increase the healing amount, but not the cap. So, it's only really affecting those that have very, very low HP. I'm talking, like, not even a 1,000 HP type low. So, that said, their main effect isn't really worth. There are sad effects, though. There's summon effects. Putting them in a sub slot is ideal for these ones. First off, they have some very high stats. Second, their summon effect gets stronger as you increase the, um, the break limits, which is the star count. Their summon effects are general like they're a massive boost towards the element that they they are and then there's a massive resistance towards the element they're strong against and in some cases it can be, even be useful in other teams but there's more to it than just that there are some add-ons that have possibly good effects but at the same time you have to do certain things in order to draw it out this is one of those cases where she increases a special attack, it's kind of overlap for some weird reason. She increases a special attack, which is a completely different multiplier. Because Vigor is in its own multiplier, Elemental Attack is in its own multiplier, Assault and Pride stay in one multiplier as well. Special Attack is in its own. When you got more multipliers, you got more potential damage if you use it correctly. She can increase the special attack. And she's pretty much one of the only... I don't ones that can really do it at this point because all the other ones have gotten rewritten to basically some either crappy version of it or 
vigor, something like that. But she's one of the ones that is very good when used correctly. But in order to use her, you have to have your entire front five characters be three separate elements. And that's generally not recommended in this game. Do not try to... Do not try to mix your elements unless you have some very special circumstances that can really draw out some power. This is one of those cases because if you do something like, say, you're fighting a wind enemy, you do three fire characters, and then you go get a water character and a wind character in order to act as, like, the two off element, then she can actually be very powerful because that way you can make the water and the wind characters be buffers or debuffers and make your fire characters the damage dealers and they'll get even more spike damage off of this. She is not the best Eidolon, but she is a very good one when used. Some of the best Eidolons will easily be the Kaiser for the subs and any Eidolon that pretty much gives you a 100% increase without any special effect. Now, there's an exception to that. There is 140% Eidolons. I said we don't have them. But the 140% on Dolans have the best elemental increases, but in order to do that, you have to match sub-slots on, um, on your party grid. And in order to do that, I will show you, show you one of my teams. Because if you notice, I have all my sub I don't want to be light. And when I find Marna Garmer, who's a, she's not a 140% I don't, but she has the same type of setup. So does Anubis, who, who's on Dark. But the main thing about them is the fact that your sub slots have to match the same element as them in order to get more power out of them. That's how it is for Marna Garmer, Anubis, and any of the 140% I don't ones. So you have to learn how to match sub slots. Plus, it has a nice little bonus effect where. If you see these stats right here, they have on a sad where it's like, okay, 753 HP, 2,223 attack power. That's what she'll give to all your characters, regardless of element. But if you're, they're a light character, they get 10% more. So that's another reason to try and match your sub slots, because you can start getting some very strong stat boosts as well. Speaking of which, weapons also give stat boosts on top of um, their effects, but you mainly want to worry about the weapon effects more than the stat boost. Now, if you also notice, a lot of these things have plus 99 on them, even some of my characters. Well, here's the thing about that. With weapons and your characters, which is a Kamihime, you have to use weapons that come with plus 1, or any plus value in order to increase it. It goes up to 99. 99 is the de facto limit. So that's something to know about. Sorry about that. That notification popped up out of nowhere. But um, plus 99 is the de facto limit. And for each plus value, say it has plus 1, that is 1 more HP and 3 more attack. If it's at plus 99, it is 99 more HP and 297 more attack. That goes to base stats. And that's what these will do. All these plus 99s is giving all these massive base stats increase. And it also works for your characters too. Adolans will only do it to other Adolans, but weapons will do it to these weapons as well as your characters. Now, it's generally recommended to do it to your weapons first, because weapons will affect everybody, as opposed to the characters, because it's only affecting them, which is why she's a little bit behind on stats. But that's a, the thing to really focus on. Now, going a little bit further, there's also something else you need to pay attention to, and that's these special type of weapons. Now, there are some weapons that can drop from the Ragnarok Catastrophe fights, and these ones happen to be extremely powerful when used correctly. Now, each one is based off of a different weapon type, and this is where weapon typing comes into play a little bit. Now, generally, they'll all have this same effect, where they will increase 
the pop the um the base stats of all weapons of the same type. And it doesn't matter how much you use of, of that for there. I could stick this in here. This glaive right here. I could stick this glaive into any of my grids and all the glaive weapons will start getting a little bit more stats. Well, it's not a little bit. It's actually a significant boost because if I remember correctly, it is 30% more attack power and 45% more HP to all glaive weapons, including itself. So when you put it in here, these stats are going to be even higher. This isn't equipped, so this is its base stats, but it will increase its own stats. Now, the second effect is where you have to have at least six or more of the same type. And that's where I'll get this boost to, to assault and, tri and um, triple attack rate, which is um, barrage. So that only happens if I get six or more glaives. And just like the, the um, elemental matching, if you give... If you put weapons on your grid that certain kami he may like, then they'll get more stat boosts off of those weapons as well than normal. And this will come into play later down the line with something called um Battlefield. And I think it's called Honor Battlefield or something like that. And it is very heavily based on favorite weapon types. So you have to really pay that attention, including the Lucent weapons, which will be other Phantom weapons that will pop up as well. They will boost favorite weapon type. And it's a long, extensive list to look up favorite weapon types. I've done it in a few videos, though, so check those out. But generally speaking, the type matching isn't that great because they really didn't balance it out too well. Some don't even get four that like the same type. Even among the R and the SR um, Kamihime. So it's hard to make a full team with some of that. But if you can, it's definitely worth it. Off the top of my head, Fire can make a decent Glaive team. Water can make a decent Spear team. Thunder can make a decent Hammer team. And Light can make a decent Staff team. But keep in mind that with the um, Staff team for Light, they're not going to be all that offensive. But when it comes to defenses, they will have a crap ton of healing. So, it will be very hard for that player to die, unless you just get one shot it with um, some insane damage, but that's only in the harder fights. Now, these are definitely some of the, the setups to aim for when you get these type of weapons. There is nine of them. If you don't happen to find one to drop, there's a section in the shop where you can actually go get them. And this is also going to lead into something else I, I want to show you too. A few things, in fact. These raid medals you'll get from any raid, no matter what you do, provided it is not an event raid. So if it's not an event raid or one of the union event raids, you'll get raid medals. It has to be a permanent raid content from this list right here where it says raid quest. But um, you'll get those. Eventually they'll rack up. You can indeed get any of these phantom weapons you want. Me personally, I would ignore these at this point because if you're doing enough diligent grinding, you'll probably find a few anyway. But if you're really focused on getting a certain one, get one copy of it only and just wait for the rest to drop. Because the main reason why anybody uses these raid medals is for these pages right here in order to unlock their S rank souls. Souls are just like Kamihime where they come with certain effects and all that. Only you can use them on any team, any element, as long as you got the right weapon. S-Ring Souls, however, take a lot of progress in order to get through. And this is the main reason why. These pages. You need 100 of those pages to get this one specific book. And you will need 5 of those books in order to unlock an S-Ring Soul. But it goes further than that. If you want to get the special weapons for Souls, because they have those too... The A rank souls will take regalia from ultimate catastrophe raids, and the higher ones can also possibly drop them too, but ultimate's the best way to get those. The S rank souls, you want their weapons, you will need a crap ton of stuff, you will need a max out version of their A rank counterpart weapon, and on top of that, you will also need three books. I have Medea, you've seen her on my, my, my um, team. However, if I want a different weapon that's made specifically for her, I have to go through that same, same stage 5 again, meaning I gotta get all sorts of different materials all across the game. I have to get 
another max out weapon, which I'm working on for fire. And I also need to get three more of those books. Now, what books am I talking about? That's in this material exchange. And this is something to know about, too, because this is where you get these soul weapons as well. Like, I have enough regalia to get a win one if I really wanted to. But I'm not too focused on that right now because I'm trying to really stock up on a lot of materials for the time being. But, um, main quest. At this point, you don't have to worry about trading for anything in main quest, period, point blank. Because there, this is so completely outdated at this point now that you don't need it. And plus, some of these materials are needed for getting s rank souls, so I wouldn't worry about main quest tab at all anymore. SP quest, you can use this to trade for certain stuff and get certain things. This is a very good one to trade for right now, at all times, period. These fangs are very hard to grind. Trade for a lot of these if you really want to. Or you could just do it the hard way and grind them out. Me personally, I need a lot of light fangs in order to try and get my stuff back up again. But, um, you will need 300 fangs. Towards the element you want for the un the um, four tier soul or the S rank soul, if you're trying to unlock them out the gate, if you're trying to get other weapons for them, you will need 300 for each weapon basically, because you'll need the 150 to get past the stage for the soul to come out. But then to get their weapon, it's going to be another 150 towards that element. So if you're really trying to optimize souls, you'll need 300 towards each element, and you'll need 18 of these books this in the back of this list right here this book you'll need 18 of them now this is one of the most discouraging things period point blank because this is very very tedious and it's not something that will be very quick however there have been gotcha deals that will give us a lot of those at once is how i got medea honestly it's up to you if you really want to do something like that or not especially if you're Especially if you don't have that much um, money to really work with. But it's something that will take months on end and you have to grind that out. So honestly, it's something that you have to be kind of diligent with. But don't let it discourage you because it is not going to be a fast process unless you spend pretty much all day, every day grinding on this game. And that's not really recommended. Now, some of the other stuff that's noteworthy is these Ori Chalicons because... um. A lot of these are used in order to final break weapons, so there's that. Every single final break weapon I know of uses Ori Chalicon, so it's something you're going to have to get your hands on. There's many different sources to do that, specifically Guild Order. But um, that's something you have to keep in mind. These Cavus as well is also needed for S-Rank Souls, but they're also needed to get extra accessory slots for your for your Kamihime. Because you can equip a sec accessories and really start spiking their stats and whatnot. So that's something else I'm about to lead into right now. Like for instance, here's a Kamihime that I have worked on. And going into her slots, you can see she has five slots. I use Cavus to unlock these. And it's giving a lot of good boosts and effects. Like for instance, you can see she's getting 19% more assault. Sorry about that, I don't know why I'm hearing noises in the background like that. But, um, she's getting 19% more assault. There's ability damage, there's defense power, there's triple attack rate, there's healing. She's getting more burst damage. She's even got a special effect with more evasion rate. I've done a video that's got a whole bunch of these different types of things. But, the basics is, to try and unlock is the accessory slots on the ones that you use the most, preferably the SSR, because the SR and the R Kamihime don't really need them. But it is cheaper on them if you do decide to do it, so it's honestly up to you, but it's not something I recommend unless they're SSR, and only the SSR you use the most. But, as you can see, there's, each accessory is going to increase base stats as well as give certain effects, and if you get three of a certain type, you'll get even more effects. But this is a lot of power behind all these guys, too. Because if you get fifth slots on your entire team, it can easily spike them up a good 10,000 power. So, that's something to use. Now, something else that you should pay attention to into this shop is getting these Eidolons. 
Now, the Holy Treasure Exchange. You will need a lot of these treasures for a lot of different things. Trade the fragments because there's nothing else you can really do with them. The fragments will turn into actual treasures. As for this, you can get special weapons from all of these. The treasures themselves only come from Guardian Raids. This is where you can get certain types of weapons too because um... If you want to be honest, this is the only one I really recommend for fire because a lot of events don't give you exceed weapons anymore, and that's very good because um that's very good for burst damage because exceed is needed to really raise a burst cap. Unless you have some very strong buffing teams, and I highly doubt that for most players. But at the same time, there was a union event which was had demon battles. And that's where you also get the will the Willem I, I don't ones as well. They're crap, but they are still extra um, magic jewels for their scenes. But these weapons are pretty much the replacement for that because we won't get them for a long, long time, if at all. And I'm talking like till next year at least. Because we're in the Seraphim Union events at this point. You'll probably never see a seed weapon unless you happen to pull it from the gacha or get it from the um, guardian raids. So, that said, this is your only means of getting them. The other stuff, they can be good, but they're not specifically worth because of the fact that they don't final break. You might need them in order to create certain grids though, because remember, you have the phantom weapons. That said, this is a very good one for water. And then some of them even defy it as well. Like this one, two forms of pride. And with how pride works, as your HP drops, you start getting more assault effect. This can start shooting your assault from your, your weapon grid to like 100 and something to upwards of 3 400 when your HP starts getting really low. So that's actually quite overpowered, but it is a bit risky because again, the lower HP, the easier it is for you to die. On the other hand, this is one of the better ones for Thunder because it gives you Vigor and Assault in the same weapon. And Vigor is in another multiplier. It's also the opposite of Pride where the more HP you have, the more effect it will, it will have. So, this is actually pretty good for um, Thunder. A lot of um, a lot of higher tier Thunder grids even use that weapon, so even 4 or 5 copies of it. And there's a few others too with these. There's also ones for every single Eidolon. Every single Eidolon. And all the elemental Eidolons have the same effect. Where using them as a main, they will increase the weapon skills by a certain percentage based on how, how strong they are, as in their break limit. They also get buffs based on their break limit. And those get stronger as well the more break limits they have. That said, it's definitely worth trying to get all of them. It's definitely worth trying to get all of these elemental ones. Especially considering the fact that when you max them out, it is 40%. So say you have... Say you somehow got 200% assault. You now have 280%. Just by using one of these that ones maxed out. That's a very significant boost. And it's not just assault. It'll do for Defender, Exceed, Elaborate... Vigor, Ascension, all of it. It is a massive spike. I use the one for light, in fact. But there's one more. This Phantom one, when you clear her raid the first time, you will get one of these treasures. These are very hard for them to drop. It is very, very rare for this to drop. The only thing that's got a harder drop rate than this, if, as far as I know, is getting that one book that needs all the pages outright from her raid. But somebody's actually done it before. I've seen a screenshot. But, um, her herself, she's not all that great. Because she's, she's that one with the same multiple elemental effect. And, quite frankly, it's not really worth. It's pretty much a glorified Willem. The only other one that's actually worth with that was SSR Diabolus, which I showed off of that. And she's only worth in certain situations. This one, not so much. However, since you do get at least one copy of her that 
still guarantees her scenes and whatnot, so you will get magic jewels off of that. But actually using her, she's not really worth. You will want the weapons, and you will want the, um, Adolans and all that, too. There's one for each element. The Phantom Element one, not so much. Just upgrade her, get her scenes, and then do whatever you want with her. You could sell her for... You could possibly sell her for orbs, I don't know. But I would still keep her anyways, just because. That and the fact that these Adolans, you will never get any more copies of them. Ever. Once the shop's cleared out of this, you will never see any more copies of them. So that said, you probably do want to keep them all, just in case. And if you really want to do a roundabout method in order to try to get more than one max break copy of them, you can use special items to upgrade them too. I wouldn't suggest doing it, but to each their own. Their stats are pretty good, but there's are better ones out, out there in the game that have better stats, so it's up to you. Plus, I've seen some some um, Adolans coming out on the um, Japanese side as well. They will be even stronger than these ones. But the fact that these are free is a reason why you should get them. Another reason, some weapon setups actually are better with these ones as a main. It's up to you to experiment and test out. But at the same time, knowing how much your, your weapons give will determine that. So the more you know, the better off you'll be. That's the biggest thing about this game. Learn what each weapon does, exact values, look up different wikis and guides and whatnot too about all of that. It will greatly help. It will greatly help. And this is something that all players need to know, even the higher tier players, because you will get stuff to replace later on down the line. You need to know, okay, is this going to make me weaker or stronger? That's the main reason why when I go to my party, you don't see a phantom weapon yet, because it's still going to make me weaker overall. It'll up my base stats, but it'll lower my weapon skills, and my weapon skills are the bigger bulk of it. Through a lot of calculation and whatnot, I found out that even though I will get a bigger stat increase, my weapon skills will offset it too much. Especially since I'm using both Assault and Vigor. So my damage will definitely take a drop. And possibly even some of my, um, possibly even some of my HP as well. But, um, going a little bit further, there's this for, um, players as well, Epic Quests. I haven't really done too much with these, but there are some stuff that's worth getting in here. For all players, in fact. But, um, you go through, do some, these quests are fairly easy, so honestly, even players just starting off, you might be able to do them. I know she'd be able to do the easiest one, the hardest one, not so much. They also give you Kamihime just for unlocking them. So if you did not get the previous Kamihime, unlock these. It's only like, I think, 10,000 gems per um, each epic quest. You go in and unlock it, you'll get a free Kamihime right out the gate. Going further in, these also have previous event stuff as well. So if you missed out on some event stuff and it interests you, like say you might want this one, I don't want for a sub slot or just because you might want more... HP with um sending her as a main. But um you can go grind that out. There's also weapons. Half the weapons aren't even worth it if you ask me. And not a single one of them will final break. So keep that in mind. The SR ones aren't worth it unless you're trying to get them for fodder. There's gotcha tickets in here. Enhancement materials if you really want to get them, but they're not really worth. Soul points is a big reason why pe people come here and get those because of the fact that um it's 100 soul points for each epic quest you sip and get, and soul points will start racking up later down the line, but starting off, you're going to want to get as much as you possibly could through certain things. This is one of those certain things. Events is another reason to actually go, go grind out soul points, because events start handing you a lot of them. Union events will give you the, um, the special soul points as well, which certain souls need. However, there's... Two specific events, one of which is ongoing right now, but it's about to end pretty soon. There's two specific events where you have to pay attention to, and this is a metal exchange. The stronger you are, the better off you will do in both events. I can say it out the gate. But, what you want to do, no matter what, for either tower or guild competition, 
you want to trade the five digit ones. You want the, the weapon break limit set and the add-on break limit set. Nothing else. Nothing else is worth it. I have to stress that so much. Nothing else is worth it. Because you can grind out accessories. You can grind out these books, especially now that, that the Phantom Guardian's here. She even drops these books outright, so there's no point in even going that. Plus, events hand them out like candy. There's no point in getting these gotcha tickets because you can get so many from so many other sources, including the raid medals. There is no point in getting these grails because you can grind them out through normal raids. There's no point in getting these magic jewels because so many other things hand them out. It may be argued that you could trade for these fangs, but I still wouldn't. Just grind them out normally like a, a regular person because you're kind of screwing yourself over on getting this very powerful break limit item, which works on any SSR at dawn, or for the tower medals, Kami, I mean for um, weapons. Even Kamihime weapons too, that's a big one they use them for. These purple break limit items are powerful. Everybody should be getting them. Nothing else is worth it in this. Not even the, um, not even the soul points either. You can get the soul points from other sources. Plus, they give you such a pitiful amount. It's not worth. It is not worth. Break limit items only. And if you don't have enough metals for them, save them up. You see, I still have some right here. If you don't have enough metals for them, save them up. You'll get more over time. The stronger you get, the more you can get at once. That's a given, especially the guild ones, because the guild competitions is get against other players, and the top tier players tend to get the most ones. But um, tower medals is more based on your own progress, so there's that. But tower is one of the cases where you have to really worry about an elemental advantage, because that's what gives you the most medals from those missions. And the next one at the point of this video is going to be wind tower. So fire is going to be the um de facto element to go for. It's another reason why you want to raise all your elemental teams, but you still want to focus on one more than the rest so they can actually do the bulk of the grinding. Preferably light or dark, but you can do it with other elements too. I've seen it happen. There's players I know that main fire, that main wind, that main thunder, that main water. It doesn't matter which one you main as long as you build up all your all your elements because you're starting we're starting to get into a lot of stuff that will really need it even the future guild competitions will want it too because there will be a very nasty effect where enemies will have a specific buff on them and if you are not hitting them with their elemental weakness the damage they take is reduced by 90 percent so you will want elemental advantage so that's something that's really going to be crucial later on down the line so try to raise as much as you can now going a little bit more into some stuff as well these are things you're really going to have to pay attention to at different points we have a special event where they're giving us all these type of stuff these are like one-time things but you can get them too and it, oh hey look they give us grails but um this is the ones that you're really going to have to pay attention to, these EXP ones, because they'll get you a lot of experience points and rank points to get higher ranks, because the higher your rank, there's a lot of beneficial effects. I'll get to that a little bit later. But, um, if you need more gems, there's a quest to grind that out. If you need more weapon or add-on materials, you can grind them out here. That's why I said they're not really worth it in anything else, because you'll get them like candy in these. These are, in order to get more upgrade stuff, mainly fangs. Mainly fangs. And then there's also accessory quests as well. They go up to rank 7, but higher ones will start needing materials. You'll need either dragon, dragon bones or runes, and you get them from, ironically, these quests. So, there's that. But, um, going into what I had mentioned before about, um, about the ranks and all of that, when you get higher ranks, you start getting more friend slots. So, there's all that as well. And, it will indeed open up a lot more things as well. Like, you'll, you'll see all the different rank points you need just by checking out the status screen. It starts getting very, very high. I need over 60,000 just to get that last little bit. Imagine the entire bar and imagine all the higher ranks. But, um... 
it will allow your friend slots to increase and the more friends you have the better off you can be because you can use their their main effects as well to make some very good combos that said this screen set this up with some of the best i don't want you to have per element like just do that the best main effects it doesn't even matter if they're level up just give them the main effect and it will it will do a nice amount of stuff for those those guys so it'll be definitely worth it but um it will help your friends out and at the same time it's what they use in order to suggest i don't want to you when you go into any sort of um any sort of quest any sort of um event all of it uses that type of stuff but also when you increase your rank points your souls get stronger stat increases as well this is where they get their stat increases the higher the rank the more hp and the base attack they get so there's all of that as well Now then, something else I wanted to show off to, um, the event list. Now, guild, guild order is found right here. You go into that, that's where you do specific missions in order to try and get rewards. Keep up on that every, as much as you possibly can, but it is kind of difficult when you're starting off. So, until you're capable of really doing quite a bit in the, I'd say, the Ragnarok catastrophes, you will probably struggle at some point with Guild Order, especially with the missions. Because some of the missions force you to use Arakami, Hime, and whatnot, too. So there's that. But this is where you find all your events and whatnot. We have a Guild competition, I've said that before. Any events that ended and you can still get some rewards from them, check this tab. Especially since there's ranking rewards for Guild Competition, Tower of Malice, and the Union events. You can get ranking rewards from those. So, definitely double check the end of tab for that. But, um, one last thing I wanted to, um, pretty much go over in your equipment, too. When it comes to, um, enhancing your Kamihime and whatnot as well... Of course, you naturally need to pay attention to the break limits. Some of them can awaken and get stronger stuff. You should know that as well. But when you also go to enhance them, it's something I've learned that kind of speeds it up. But you can feed them weapon materials, prefer preferably the SR ones, and it will spike their experience by a lot. I don't have anything that really does it right now, so there's that. But... Another thing that can also spike them up, if you happen to get it, are these items right here. Don't go out of your way to do so, but they give massive amounts of experience. This one particular, this gold item, is enough to get a Kamihime from level 1 to 74. And that means if they are 3 star SSR or lower, or even just other rarities entirely, it's going to max out their level as far as I can get for the time being. Although, no matter how many break limits they have, if they are SR or R, they will instantly max out with that. You will need a Dragonic Eye for that one. The Silver one you can get with Jewels too, but some some events and gotchas will feed it too. You don't need to go out your way for them, but if you happen to get them, by all means, use it. The um, Enhancement Materials too, if you use... um. SR weapons fodder and all that type of stuff. Those are um those are kind of worth it because you can grind them out through the, easily through that thing. It's up to you if you want to do it. Now, Dragonic Eyes, if you get shards, save 10 shards, you'll trade them up for here. You can get more of those little purple break limit things as well. This is the only ticket that's worth it. If you ever get it that far, and even that's not worth it that much, because you, by the time you get that many eyes, there's so much stuff you can do. But if you want some special characters that you'll never see anymore, like special event characters that have one-time things, or say, different characters where you get, like, there's some crossover events that we have as well, and those ones will likely not show up again, That's this is your way of getting them.
but it takes a very long time to get that many eyes. Even paying players would have trouble with that. So there's that. This is the main reason why you might still want to get some eyes to um, burn through as well. Some of these weapons, like this one for instance, very good effects. Very good effects. And they can final break as well. So keep that in mind. But um, that specific weapon ticket, yeah, this um, weapon ticket guarantee right here, which you can also get through certain gotchas, will feed any of these at random. So, for instance, if you really want to try and gamble at it, you can get eyes and keep getting that ticket. That may be the one ticket that might be worth more than a special miracle ticket, but it's whatever. Honestly, I would not suggest trading for any of these four tickets. I would just go for the weapon outright and then just, just go from there. <coughs> Excuse me, I've been talking a long time in this video, but um, some of these weapons are worth, some of them are not. It's up to you to figure out which skills are, are best suited for you, or even, like, some of them even, this is an access to, a, to an exceed, which is technically free, but hard to get. But if you are going to go out your way for, um, some of them, definitely some of these exceed weapons, because, um, they're not easy to get your hands on anymore. They are not. Like, they are... Exceed is hard to find now. But, um... Anyways, going into one last thing is something to know about when you set up your party formation, though. You might think tossing them in randomly when you have different types of skills and whatnot could work. And, for the most part, it kind of does... But when there's characters that can up their um their burst gauge rate or directly increase it, you may want to stick them in front of others because they're more likely to fill up their gauges more than other characters. That's why I have this type of setup right here. Because um upon burst you'll get 20 gauge. Upon burst you'll give everybody 20 gauge period point blank, whether they're after her or before her. This one can get an extra 10 per turn, and then she busts herself pretty nicely to possibly get higher combo rates there's nothing too much you can do about the soul you can never change her setup she's going to be pretty slow right here so that's why she's in the back and i have that for other characters as well i have that for other such situations and formations like if i were to take her this one right here that i selected she would be in front of her but not in front of her like i will show that an example of how i'd set up that formation right now like, for instance, say I want to get rid of her. That's how I'd set them up. Because she's guaranteed to get a triple combo after she bursts. Which will just be an instant 30 after her um, burst attack. So that's something I'd do for that one. Formations can really matter when you try and, when you try to get faster burst cycles and whatnot. Quite frankly, if I really wanted to fastest possible burst cycles i would do something like this for these first four i would put her there i would put her there and i'll keep that this is a st stupidly fast burst team in fact it's just that there's no healing to really keep her alive but um something like that pretty worthwhile so let me rearrange my team Okay, they're back to normal. But um, that's one last little hint I have to give in order, in order to really keep up on some stuff too. Because um, that's something that people tend to overlook. And some kind of wondered how I'm getting burst so fast in my videos. That's why. Because if I go to this party right here. This party, along with a few other possible setups they can get bursts off every two or three turns. Sometimes they can even let it off back to back. It depends on what happens. So, that said, that's why your formations can really make a difference. Now, granted, normally I would have her, Iris, in front of, in front of Tis Trya, but... During burst time, Tish is actually a little bit faster. And that's what allows me to do the double full burst. 
you have to know what your characters do. Even the SR ones. Even the R ones. Because some of them can actually be pretty good. Now, for example, and I have to go to my light team for this one, too. My light element. But, um, some of these characters can actually do quite a bit. Like, for example, here's a free SR to give you. When you're starting off, debuffs are pretty powerful. Hey, guess what? She gets one. She also applies Bland, which can also lower the chances of you getting hit. That's why she's good. Now, there's a few other ones. I think it was her or her. I forgot which one. I think it was this one. No, it's not her, but she's got some pretty good effects, too. Like, she can increase it. Increase the um, orb count for an enemy before they do their super nukes, and then lower that combo rate and attack power. Even some S SR and R characters are worth it, definitely. Um, I got this arranged by the newest anyway, so I probably couldn't find her. Her, her, this is it. Like her, some people use her because of the fact that this is a large damage cut that goes to other characters. On top of it, she can remove one debuff off of you and prevent the next from one from landing. That's actually pretty strong. If she was SSR, that would be great. If she was SSR, that um, damage cut would probably also work on herself. Here's an Arhimi I like using a lot too. Because she could start hitting a lot of bursts off if you do it right. I've had a little bit of fun playing around with her. I might be putting her on my teams a little bit more often. Another Arkami he made that I like using a lot is her. Because, granted, this has a long cooldown, and on top of that, it takes three turns before it goes off. But when she heals, everybody gets half their HP back, no matter what. It doesn't matter how much ascension you have. It doesn't matter... What happens with healing caps and all that? Half their HP. This has no cap. Half their HP back when she uses it. When used correctly, it is very strong. My teams have HP that can go into like 25,000. And she's healing half that back. Everyone. In one go. And this is considering that with the healing caps and whatnot, other characters may heal, say, 3,000, 4,000. So, that's very potent when used right. The more you know about the, you, your teams, the better off you will be. But, um, let's see here. Her. This is another one I like using a lot, too, because of the fact that if you are going to use debuffs, Defense Down is definitely one of the most potent ones because it will really spike your damage output. It can essentially double it if you know how to defense cap, caps and all that work. She stacks one in a frame, and she has a C-frame defense down. So, she can start racking up a lot of defense down. Again, know what your characters can do. This is the biggest bulk of how, you, how good your teams can actually do. Because, quite frankly, anybody can get weapons to go chuck at whatever they want. Sometimes you can even get mixed weapons as well. And still pull some stuff off, but I wouldn't suggest it. But you can get weapons. You can easily still get weapons. Will they be good weapons? Possibly not, because um, some are just there just just be a stat boost. But your Kami Hime is the biggest thing that will make or break you, especially in the tower event, because that is heavily based on Kami Hime. Since you can't use the same Kami Hime more than once every every few days. But the larger your roster, the better off it is. And that doesn't even include what the SSR can do. Because quite frankly, I have pages upon pages of Kamihime. But if I just stick to the SR and the R, my highest page count dropped from 17 to 14. They still make up the bulk. The more of them you have, the better off you'll be. Especially when you have to use them. Because there are some missions that will force it. Or some events that can force it. So keep that in mind.
The more of them they have, you be the better. And quite a lot of them are free. The Gem Gotcha hands you so many R Kamihime. It even hands some SR. Events will hand you some SR. Eventually, your teams will build. But you do have to pull for them in the Gem Gotcha, and you will have to do events, and especially Epic Quests if you miss them. That's... I cannot stress that enough. SSR are very powerful. There's no denying that, especially certain ones, but they are not everything. You do indeed need your SR and your R Kamihime, so do not neglect getting them. You may not use them all the time, but you will use them eventually. And my suggestion to you, if they are SR or SSR, get at least three stars on them so you can get all the all the magic jewels in their scenes. If you can go all the way, go to four star. It will max out their skills. Because their skills will upgrade at um five levels away from the cap. But their base stats will still increase as long as you keep leveling them up anyways. And then another thing that people tend to overlook is also add-ons as well. Because quite frankly, you want to get as many SSR add-ons as you possibly can. To at least get six per each element. After that's where you can be a little bit picky and sell off whoever. There's the specific ones I keep because of the fact that, well, you can't get them anymore. Like this one. They gave us her through certain events, but she has scenes. And honestly, her effects aren't too bad. It really isn't. But they're still better than her. But that's all I can really say about that one. And um, also, keep up on accessories too, like... I mainly use light, so that's why I got more light accessories than anything else, because I've been feeding them into other stuff in order to try and upgrade these ones. But, keep up on your accessories. Some of them, you could probably get rid of. Like this, this is one of the worst accessories you can possibly get in the game. Even though it's SSR. So, you could probably just get rid of those. But, some, like this, actually has some pretty good potential. Because, first off, TR effect is very good. It is also up in your combo rate, which is the main reason why you can get a TR effect. And if you do happen to have a healer, well, their healing cap just increased. If you don't have a healer, they're still getting more healing. But some of these are very, very good. Some of these are very, very powerful. And then on top of that, if you happen to get a devil one, you might get a special effect where it comes from a certain slot. I think this one had it? No, this one didn't have it. It was another one I had, another devil bracelet. Like, yeah, see, this one has a special evasion effect, it has to be in the third slot. This one has a special attack effect, it has to be in the first slot. You might look out. But, um, keep up on your accessories, keep up on your adult ones, keep up on your weapons, keep up on everything. Because you will need so much stuff. That said, the very last thing I am going to show... The very last thing I'm going to show. I have to go into party because that's how how you even get here right now. The S rank souls. Just some of the crap that you have to get in order to get some of these souls is insane. But still well worth it. I love using Medea now that I have her. And I still have to go and get some of her weapons too. But um... As you can see, you need a ton of crap just to do do the first stage. These are storyline stuff too. That's why I said don't don't trade them. Don't trade them. This is the only thing they're worth now. But each one has different effects and details. My suggestion to you: definitely get a very good damage dealer one. We only have half of them right now, but the other half will come later. She's a very good damage dealer. Medea is a very very good damage dealer, and she is very potent in tower. Get as many of, of her weapons as you can. But um. This healing one might actually come very helpful, especially if you have a sa staff grid. I've been told that there's some very difficult content later on called Heroic Difficulty. You will need her for that. You will need this one for that, so she is definitely going to be worth getting. She is the defensive base soul. Others that might actually catch your interest too. She can actually be a very, very strong damage dealer when used right. A lot of people love her for some reason. I'm not so sure. Her skills aren't too good, but she can still be a decent buffer in raids, so I'm not fully sure. 
she might be good when used right, but personally, she's not really impressed with anything for me. She's mainly just got looks, and that's it. There's going to be other ones that pop up, too. There's another five that's on the way, at, like, months down the line. There's a good handful of them that's actually pretty worth it as well. So, there's that as well. But it is a long, drawn-out process, and you will need so much stuff. You can click on each stage to see what you need. This is where the fangs come in. You also need the Adolin Orbs, too. Which is the other thing I didn't show, but the Adolin Orb Shop, you don't really need to get too much out of there. Except for the Kaisers, because there's free copies of the Kaisers. A thousand, I mean 10,000 Adolin Orbs each. At the same time, you need a lot of Adolin Orbs for these. But thankfully... The only thing you need to repeat with souls is stage 5 in order to get their weapons. Because if you want any more of these weapons, you have to repeat the stage 5. That's the only thing you have to repeat. That said, if you're trying to potentially max out every single soul, you generally want to pick one of their weapons to go after, not both per element, but just one weapon per element, per S-Rank Soul, 20 of these freaking books, these closed books right here, 20 of the, those, and God knows how much other stuff, it is not something you can rush, I cannot stress that enough, it is not something you really can rush, the only thing you can really rush it on is if there's a gotcha you can pay for, that is the only time. Otherwise, you will have to take grinds out for a long time. A long time. But anyways, that's all for this. This video has gone on quite long, but like I said, there's a lot of info with this game. There's a lot of stuff you can do, and it's still growing. It's still expanding. It's still increasing. Because later on, we will still get more permanent content. We will get some other stuff to possibly aim for. I don't know too much about the Machine Beast either, but I heard they actually can do some... Pretty decent stuff. The Lucent weapons, people are still looking into, especially given the whole favorite weapon type thing, because, uh, <laughs> the favorite weapon types is a mess. I'm not even going to lie about that. The devs honestly did not think that one through, because there are some setups that just make no sense, and there's some that you can't even do a full front line with. And good luck getting four SSR that like the same weapon <laughs> and are the same element. So, there's a lot, there's a lot, but honestly, if you want my overall opinion, this game definitely is still very good, it's just a lot harder on newer players, because the earlier you get in this game, the more you can get out of it, because a lot of events have already repeated multiple times, you are able to get their stuff, multiple copies, some of them you probably even can't get anymore. You want to be able to do this as early as possible to have as much access as possible, if that makes sense. It's not like you, you're cut off completely if you do it late, or even far later after the time of this video. Like, maybe you sit up and watch this video, this doesn't convince you, and you still just jump in at a much later date, because something might have came out that really convinces you. We do have some very interesting crossovers after all. There's a Harley crossover, there's a Fruit of Grisaia crossover, there's an Icky Tosin crossover later down the line... Some of that stuff might interest you, but um, the sooner you get into this, the better, and that's the main point of this video as well, is to cover players up across all different types of strengths and whatnot. There's players stronger than me that might still get something out of this, so there, that's something to know. But anyways, that's all for this. This video has gone on long. It's a long video, but there's a lot of stuff in this game, believe me. But um... I will leave some links in, in the, um, the pinned comment that's worth looking at, so definitely check those out. I also have a Discord. I may not be on there all the time, but there definitely are people that can help you out with that one. I've heard official Discord's gotten a little bit better, but I still can't fully suggest it. If you do want to check it out, there's usually a link that's right here that leads to it, but unfortunately they kind of took that out. I will have to find out what the um, official Discord is. If somebody has that link, you can post it, and I will mark that comment. But, um, anyways, that's all for this. 
more is going to come soon because there's a few events that's right here that's about to end. The Eruption of Hellfire and the um, Guild Comp Competition, they're about to end, so I will be doing more event videos pretty soon. But, um, again, I cannot stress these few things enough. The sooner you get into this game, the better off you'll be overall, especially if you're a free player. Also, don't let that grind for s rank souls get to you too much you have to grind for so much stuff in this game as is if that's discouraging you you will be discouraged from all the other stuff you have to do i'm not going to lie about that one also this game is available on nutaku and dmm i heard the dmm side is a little bit better especially if you're playing the japanese one but the japanese one is far later into the game so you've missed out on way more than what you would do starting off on this now, granted, there's some things I'm not too happy about Nutaku doing with this, because they have screwed up a few updates and whatnot. They are going out their way to try and fix some of them. I will give them that much credit, but quite frankly, there's been some issues with this on the Nutaku side, so personally, I would probably suggest the DMM one. But if you are on the DMM one, I can't help you, because I have a union, I have a full friend list, but it will still get extended. And a lot of the people on my Discord is also on the Nintaku um, side, so there's that. But, um, and also, fair warning, too. If you join my Discord, I have no restrictions whatsoever on a lot of stuff. There's even a, a not safe for work side, so you can post lewd content there. As long as you're not disrespectful, that's good. So, there's, like, no restrictions. I am pretty lenient on a lot of stuff. It doesn't mean I'm lenient on everything, though. But, um, again, there's my Discord. I will post a few wikis. There's an English translated wiki. It still needs some stuff up to date, but they've got a, a good bulk of info already translated. If you have access to Google Translate or something like that, then you probably are better off the Japanese wiki, because it's got far more info than even I can give. So there's that. But anyways, that's all for this video, guys. More is going to come soon, and take care.